Um, so we're a young company since March of 2021. We now have a staff of about uh, 35 employees and consultants um, and still growing. Uh, we've um, uh, done about 25 activations. It's you know more now since we made this deck a, a little bit ago, but um, we've worked with uh, companies from um, Salesforce and Molson Coors to Bacardi and you know Fidelity International, all the other names that we can put up here. And what we learned very quickly in working with these companies is you know how um, this was going to be a mechanism of uh, disciplines coming together to create enterprise adoption, um, small and medium-sized business and consumer adoption as well as uh, an opportunity to connect the entire omni-channel for these brands and for uh, smaller groups and consumers, everything that they do in the virtual world now has a global point of entry. Um, and uh, you know, all throughout what we've done with our clients, we learned a lot about how they could safely enter this space. And you know, Ryan, maybe I could toss it over to you for that. Yeah, I mean, after about a year or so, we've got a lot of feedback from our clients and essentially the main points that they kept bringing up was no crypto, you wanna use credit cards, um, they want an always on experience with an easy point of entry to get in. Um, mobile friendly would be great as well. If possible, um, it needs to have keep, uh, secure data end to end for, so people can actually put in personal identifying information without people, the risk of it getting stolen. Um, decentralized you know, uh, metaverses just typically don't have that kind of security that we can trust. Um, obviously everyone's heard about like NFT loyalty programs and stuff like that. So what's this new level of engagement, new level of gamification that brings in more loyalty? And then what, how do we bring this in, um, to the physical world and create a, kind of a circular paradigm where it's go to virtual world, get the thing, retrieve the thing from physical world, get your next quest from physical, go to digital or vice versa. So we, we listen to our clients and it's been really exciting to just um, continue moving forward. Not really sure. So what what Terra Zero sees as the market opportunity is not to um, deter from the growth of things like blockchain and decentralization, but empower it to come in in the way that will work um, for not only businesses but consumers. And and we need to create these rails um, for uh, people to use their credit cards to make purchases, and and that will get people into the ecosystem where blockchain can integrate and digital assets can exist. And these experiences can exist that are um, linked to wallets and experiences that people want to opt into and um, analytics that can help businesses make more informed and better decisions. Ways that businesses can better monetize and have social integration um, and also have means of data capture in a way that users are opting into as opposed to the modus operandi, which for decades now has been, you know, take someone's data and in some way or another, typically sell it back to them. Um, so this is an activation we did with BB Rexa uh, for, uh, with Warner Records for her track satellite. Um, we built an environment that uh, channeled the uh, very Hanna-Barbera Jetsons-esque aesthetics of the music video, which was animated. And we had a bunch of different uh, quest components and. Everybody who came into the experience was BB. And uh, a couple of weeks later, we actually relaunched the campaign um, to have a disco theme for the album launch. And we saw you know, pretty significant statistics. What, what has shown across you know, all of our client activations is there's very high retention time, and there's very high click-through rates, um, and there's very high repeat visitor rates where um, across almost all platforms, most of these companies and creators see very, very low numbers of matriculation. Um, social media at large, especially for companies with larger audiences, they don't have that matriculation that they used to. Um, but, you know, if you can have breakdancing uh, little gremlins there and, and characters, then uh, you can create a better, more engaging environment that people can have fun with and then share with their friends. So. BB was able to post about this in her Instagram story and users could swipe up to jump in and with a number of seconds, they are, are in this environment. Um, we were also able to capture streams there by integrating um, uh, Spotify down at the bottom. And um, 
not only are we able to do this for uh, artists like BB Rexa and companies like Warner Records and, and other uh, companies like Fidelity International and Bacardi that we work with, um, but we're able to do this for small and medium sized businesses as well. Ryan, if you want to uh, jump into that. Yeah, so we are currently um, working on bringing the metaverse more to the masses, I guess, if you want to put it that way where it's not going to cost people $100,000 in order for them to do an activation or $50,000. We want it to be something where it's easy to get in. It's just another extension of ways that you interact with people on a daily basis. It's another way to reach customers um, or clients, whatever you want to, whatever job you're doing. So as you see here, there's office space and you can use that for anything you want. There's storefronts. You can use that for anything you want um, from kind of dual um, and then one of the big use cases that we've seen is for um, mental health. Uh, we've seen quite a few companies starting to mess around with that. And we saw, so we started to think what would be a great way to have engagement there. Um, one of the things that we've gotten told by a couple of different people um, is through studies is having these virtual experiences can actually tone down anxiety and promote, you know, quicker, better healing, especially for um, surgeries. So that's one of the things that we've been looking at and trying to create these digital environments or digital twins in some cases to promote either activities or, you know, learning or de-stressors. And um, I know that for me personally, um, if going to a counselor, you know, would seem maybe more difficult than it would be to somebody else. So having that digital version of myself who could be there slightly, you know, it's me represented, but it's not just a flat Zoom. Um, picture that I'm talking to, another flat picture, then that um, that sense of community is you're, you're building that with that person. Um, and that's definitely something we've been seeing from our Art Miley's brand and eyes generation, and then especially going down. And we really view this as like what's going to be coming um, as people graduate from Roblox and Fortnite is what's their next thing that they're going to have to be moving into. And we think it's these types of things. And as more and more people become entrepreneurs, this is a great way for people to be doing that as well. Yeah, you'll you'll definitely see an, an evolution of, um, you know, Twitch culture and, and YouTube culture and, and even freelance platforms. People will have this, uh, like like Patreon, um, like Twitch and and uh, other platforms. This will be a new way to create engagement and a new way to monetize. And you see those behaviors play out. Um, you know, we have very strong metrics of what we do. Um, albeit they're anonymous, we can we can take data in aggregate and understand how environments are performing in terms of experiential marketing and A/B product testing and things like that. You've you've never had such a precise lens on on those kinds of things, and it it goes to show that uh, not only is there a great um, uptick in retention time, but also retention of information. You see uh, the behaviors and the kind of um, uh, the kind of behaviors you see in real life playing out when people are placed in these virtual environments where they navigate just like they would the real world. But what they have is more autonomy to pick what they like instead of what they like being fed to them. Um, and they can be more honest in how they express themselves because you're seeing the convergence of um, the virtual and how somebody wants to authentically and naturally express themselves with the um, uh, with the uh, virtual environment, um, but also a very social environment where, uh, you know, you see people hiding behind uh, keyboards in on, on other platforms, you know, there's more accountability um, in the virtual world like this. So it is the best of both worlds, um, let alone the fact that these are creating immense opportunities for larger businesses to participate in ESG um, and CSR initiatives and um, and create new culture around their businesses that they would never have before otherwise. So that's very much what we're excited about creating in Terra Zero and the opportunities we see to uh, bring all these disciplines together and find great talent and, and put them to work uh, building the future of the internet. Yeah, and then one of the other things we wanted to discuss is how new jobs are being created um, in the space. That's kind of been one of the cool things that we've obviously, Adam, we've worked with you um, and finding, you know, positions that, you know, may traditionally be sale, like it could be a sales position for, you know, X, 
but that, that those skill sets are still universal for metaverse um programming skills are still universal for metaverse game design all of these different things it's just moving to slightly different use cases and technologies but people we, we get asked all the time or in, in our you know inbox how do i get involved with metaverse what do i start how do i how do i get started and it's like well have you played a video game before have you ever been have you ever been to a store have you ever done anything in, outside and the answer is usually yes and it's like okay well if you have any sort of skills there's something that you can pretty typically wrap yourself around as a skill set and try to apply that to metaverse technologies um i can talk like my background um you know i have legal background and and creative as well so it's like what are what are those two things and how do they um work so it's like okay business structures you need to know how to make those you need to know how to um uh, need to know how to manufacture or do contracts, negotiate all these different things that are, you know, it's pretty standard. And then you know, there's client work. How do you manage clients, project pipelines, project management, client relationships, and then there's what's goes on when the, when the thing goes live, what happens if there's problems, how do you handle those things? So there's all these different skills that most people have had in some point in their life. Um, and just how do you start pointing them towards the new technology, um, that doesn't quite have a defined destiny quite yet, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, there's um there's definitely there's some sort of phrase or or quote for, you know, on a long enough timeline, jack of all trades becomes master of the universe. So um in seeing all of these disciplines come together, you know, people definitely do have areas of expertise, but um the the future of the internet is going to be so multidisciplinary, somebody who has a background in entertainment and platform development and somebody who understands Unity um, or, or TypeScript, these people are going to be able to accelerate and move much faster. And so connecting with talent like that has been very important to us um, because it helps us um, accelerate the development of our products that are getting into new markets where not only do we have to find the right market and build it around their needs, but um, especially when it comes to larger businesses, at every turn in the road, like Ryan was saying, what is the education of the legal risks and impacts and, and IT and how can these environments be entered safely for sake of um, PII and, and IP? And um, you know, we're having to cover all of that uh, while creating products that are new to that end. So um, you know, a, a great example of that is what we built with uh, Fidelity International uh, for Decentraland. We built the Fidelity International Campus and the Game of Life that was all about um, financial li literacy and um, healthy financial habits, among many other things. And um, Fidelity was International was also able to not only give away wearables, but they also had um, uh, tokens that they were able to give away, as you can see here. Um, and we were able to program a randomizer that would um, result in somebody claiming one of six. And we had several different re releases. and um, it's it's about creating long tail relationships with new kinds of users, which down the line, um, whether or not this is the goal of Fidelity International, um, they are able to engage with these users for other kinds of products and services or other kinds of events where people can learn more about how to prepare for their future from a financial perspective. And if you can gamify these things and help people get set up in ways that are typically you know never taught in school, um, unless you specialize in them, um, that's a major change agent for the way that people engage with content that's going to help them uh, for the rest of their lives. And that's something very important that we feel very strongly about and something we're very happy to do and dedicate our company towards.